Alright, so welcome to something a little bit different, something new I want to start trying to bring out on the channel. It's kind of a series, I guess you could call it, um, where we basically go over the more prominent topics that have a bit of a more of an involved discussion around them, you know, whether it's a negative or positive, where it's things that need to be different, or whatever it could be. And just go out on from a mutual kind of middle ground, kind of look at my own opinion on the thing, the, the positives and negatives from both sides, and just kind of discuss the topic in general. And there's a lot of things that do fall under uh, big discussion points without uh, throughout the Resident Evil series. So I do want to kind of make one of these videos at least, you know, once a month, twice a month, depending on kind of what the topic could be. Um, some are obviously bigger than others. And I do want to start out with a banger, which I'm sure you can tell what it's going to be about when the video does start. But, um, one thing I want to do with this series is, this is what I kind of want to start doing, is involving you you guys more in uh, the videos and the streams and stuff like that. So, around the beginning of each month, I'll put out a poll on the channel in the community tab and kind of give you the ideas of what I'm currently working on for this series. And, you know, whichever one gets the kind of most votes or whatever, we're the one that comes out that month. And then, you know, the next month that one we removed, and replace with something else so you know if your vote doesn't make it then it it's still going to be coming out it's just a case of when um but uh yeah this is something new i want to try and we'll just see what happens so without any further ado let's get into the resident evil 6 discussion okay so resident evil 6 some people love it some people hate it and i do kind of sit on the fence with it a lot i think the game itself is very fun like a lot of what you can do is fun um and that's purely on a gameplay standpoint not a story standpoint or anything like that but the gameplay is good is there a resident evil game absolutely not <laughs> it shouldn't be a resident evil game it's so over the top with action and that's usually the biggest complaint i see about it um and there's a lot more so that's kind of my opinion. I like the game to play it. Like the game to play it is fun, but as a Resident Evil game and a story and stuff like that, it's not the best. So that's just how I sit with it. But we're gonna go from both sides and kind of look at the positives and negatives that people usually say about it. And first, we'll we'll start with the positives first. So first up, obviously, the combat and the gameplay is really good. Like there's a lot of mechanics in this game. Um, throughout the entire game, um, the melee system is completely kind of revamped. There's this quick shot kind of feature you can do with the guns, which really sets you up to be able to do these like devastating melee hits. Uh, stamina doesn't take up sprint, so you can run around as much as you want. And there's a lot of weapon variation as well um, across the campaigns. Obviously, three different campaigns: four if you count Ada, which is the gameplay you're seeing. Ada was more of a solo campaign, which is good. Um, another thing that is a kind of improvement on the gameplay from 5. Yes, obviously this is a co-op game as well, but the AI partner is unkillable. Like, they can't die, which is good, because I remember many times in RE5, Sheva would just get herself stuck in a position where I couldn't save her and she'd die, and um, more so on the hard difficulties where you take a lot more damage. Um, so that's definitely an improvement from 5. On top of gameplay and mechanics and stuff like that, there is a fair bit of fan service in this game. Um, that being returning characters such as Sherry, Leon, Ada, they're all back. Uh, I think Jake Wesker was an interesting one. I think... I don't think he's ever going to come back. He could. But um, they were definitely going for something there to kind of reintroduce Wesker and some of the OG kind of backstory a little bit, which was really good. Um, and one thing we did get to see, which is not the first time they've met, but Leon and Chris fight each other in this game, briefly, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and it, it is also a nice touch how that Sherry knows Chris through Claire, because obviously Claire and Sherry are together in, the, in Resident Evil 2. So it's nice that the characters do kind of know each other through other characters that aren't present in this game, which is nice. On top of the main single player co-op campaign, the mercenaries mode did return in 6 and I would say, and a lot of people would agree from what I've seen, mercenaries mode in 6 is a lot of fun 
because of how well the combat works. Like it's so fluid, there's so many things you can do with the guns, with the melee systems, with different characters and the different weapons, and it is a lot of fun. So Mercenaries mode's always been great. You know, through four, five, six, three, original three that is. And even in village, it, it's really good. So I do kind of I do hope they do keep bringing back Mercenaries mode post village or add more to the village one. But uh, 6 is Mercenaries mode is top notch. Now we'll look at the negatives and what people think this game wasn't very good. First of all, it is an action game. Um, it's very action movie, the whole game. Um, more specifically certain campaigns than others. They all have a different style and the campaign that kind of sticks out the most as you know, action is probably Chris. Um, if you didn't know, at the time of Resident Evil 6 development, they were trying to kind of appeal to the masses a little bit more, and around the time 6 released, this was when Call of Duty was at its top, like its peak, and, you know, they wanted some of that audience. So the Chris campaign was very action-heavy, very guns-blazing, kind of huge over-the-top action, and the other two are like that as well, but they're not as bad with it. I think Leon's campaign is more... Not exactly, but it's more familiar t to you know people who have played the previous games, like 5 and 4 specifically. Um, it's not as action-focused until the end, really. And Jake's campaign is a bit of both. Um, there's a bit of action sequences, a bit of slower sequences, and then it's got some sneaky bits in it as well, which is interesting. Um, I do quite remember the sneaky part where you have to avoid the the nemesis thing, I forget what it's called, Ustanak, I think, and um, avoid that as best you can. So, Jake's campaign is probably the most interesting, but Leon's campaign is probably the best, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, the whole game is quite action focused, as you have probably already know if you've played it. Another big issue with the game is the length and the pacing is really off, as well as the constant replaying of sections and different campaigns. It's not constantly doing that, but one thing that I remember specifically that really bugged me about it was there's two boss fights in the game. There's one with Chris, Piers, Sherry and Jake, and that's the uh, the big, like, the big massive things. I don't know what they're called, you know, like the things with the things on their backs that stick up, those things. Um, and then again with Jake and Sherry and Leon and Helena against the... Ustanak. It's the same boss fight twice. Like, <laughs> I get it that the characters meet up at that point and they do the same thing, but I feel like if you've done it once in one campaign, when you get to it again, either it just skips it for you or you have an option to skip the fight because you've already done it, but it didn't. <laughs> so you have to do it again, which was kind of annoying. Um, that's a big issue because it, re it really ruins the pacing of like the other campaigns. Like if you play Leon's campaign first and then Jake's campaign, you'll get to the same point again and you'll be like, okay, what the hell is this? Because Chris and Leon's campaign don't really cross over that much, but Jake and Leon's do. So it, it does kind of throw you out of it a little bit when you're playing one, one campaign you haven't played yet and you're like, okay, I'm doing the same thing again. It just kind of doesn't fit right. On top of the kind of crossing over uh, sections of the game, there is a few sections in certain campaigns that do drag on a little bit more so, I think, in Sherry and Jake and Leon and Helena's campaigns. Um, the most annoying part of Leon's campaign is probably the final fight with Simmons. It just keeps going, like, it doesn't really stop. It starts on a train. Then it's on a rooftop, then it's in the building, then it's on the roof. It, it, there's so many different fights with him, it just kind of gets to a point where you're like, is this guy not dead yet? <laughs> he turns into so many different things before he dies, and it, it just takes forever. And then there's a bit in Jake's campaign, excuse me, in Jake's campaign where you are in the snow, and you have a jet ski, and you got to find these three datapad things, and the area you're in, it's huge, and they're so split up. 
and it just takes forever to get it done. Uh, there is a pretty cool kind of wave survival bit at the end of that section that kind of makes up for it, but it just takes fucking forever, dude. Like, it really does. I do like the jet ski, though. That's pretty cool. It's one of those things that they've added to the game as a kind of mechanic where you can drive vehicles and stuff. It happens quite often throughout the game, and it, it, it's fun, but the area is empty and massive, and it just takes forever to get it done. But yeah, that's basically both sides of the coins. People like it for one reason and another reason. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you like the game, great. Play the game to your heart's content. If you don't like it, that's fine too. But I kind of do sit in the middle with it. I enjoy playing it on a gameplay standpoint. But as a story and a pacing and a enjoying it standpoint, I really don't. But what makes me enjoy it is how it plays. Nothing else. <laughs> um... But of, of course that's my opinion, I'm sure you all have different opinions. And do let me know in the comments, obviously that is what this video is about. You're kind of discussing the big talking points of the Resident Evil series in a medium kind of standpoint. I'm just kind of throwing out what people like, what people don't like, and then kind of throwing my own opinion in there as well. I agree with what most people say is the bad points of it. I do agree with a lot of it. Um, and I do agree a lot with the good points as well, like the combat, the gameplay is incredible, but it doesn't help when the game itself to play and listen to and do things in outside of combat isn't but yeah that'll do it as always though leave your thoughts down below in the comments about what you think of Resident Evil 6 again keep an eye out for those polls at the beginning of the month for these videos and these episodes thank you for watching remember to leave a like and subscribe <laughs> and I'll catch you all tomorrow